Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is our uh, bi-weekly technical webinar. Uh, this week, we are going to talk about um, Cameo, Chrome OS, and GCP. Uh, as Zentegra is known for uh, giving you a solution-driven uh, approach, we talk about, um, uh, we just don't talk about product. We talk about how the whole solution fit in the, into your EUC story. Uh, this is where we come in. We uh, talk about um, EUC given the product nature. It is not something that we can just talk about uh, one solution or one thing. Uh, there are many things that makes EUC. Uh, if we take example of Cameo on how they have worked really well on integrating and aligning this EUC story. Um, so when we talk about EUC, there are many layers to go with. We talk about user layer, we talk about access layer, control layer, uh, resource, and hardware. So these are the five layers that uh, sits on uh, that that is all brought together by operations layer. When we talk about user layer, we talk about uh, what operating system, what device, and where they are coming in from. Now this is this is the part that gets often overlooked. Uh, because as per when when a, when a, a business is looking for uh, EUC, they are focused too much on to technology, uh, on what technology uh, they they can use to um, to build their EUC. They they overlook uh, the user layer or access layer, uh, or even uh, the hardware or your operations layer. This is where Cameo comes in. Cameo brings in the value of uh, clubbing everyone together. We start with the user layer. That's where uh, your Chrome OS comes in. It can run on any device. It can be, it does not have to be expensive uh, uh, laptop or a hardware where you run it, uh, but you want to run all your application, all your productivity application is running into any device, anywhere, anytime. This is what uh, Chrome OS gives you. You have a Chrome OS that launches uh, Cameo. Uh, and gives you access to your productivity application, which is running on, uh, which is running on GCP. Now this gives you a complete independence from uh, uh, from running a traditional data center, running in a traditional approach, or being tied on on a hook to expensive uh, software vendors who can do the job. They can sell you the product, but they cannot give you the solution that works end to end. With that, I will turn it to Daniel to start with our uh, Chrome story, which is our user layer. Uh, user layer, once we are done with the user, the user layer and talk about Chrome OS, we will move on to the uh, access control and resource layer. That's where Cameo comes into play to give you uh, end-to-end -end solution for your end user computing story. With that, uh, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you so much, Jordan, for joining us today uh, to help our audience and uh, and customers uh, understand how and where Chrome fits, how and where Cameo fits, where GCP comes in. This is this is this is the this is the exceptional job that Cameo has done on pulling everything together. And more than happy to, uh, we are glad to be on this call to uh, see this complete story and journey. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Daniel. While while Daniel is pulling up uh, his slide, the, uh, team, this we have a small group today, so don't take this as a monologue where we are just telling you. Feel free to raise your hand or request to unmute, and we will be more than happy to uh, make it uh, more collaborative where you can ask question as we move along. Okay, thanks for that. I'm hoping that you can both see my slide and hear my audio this time. Um, great. So thanks for that. My name is Daniel Kane. I am on the Chrome Enterprise team and I look after our tech partnerships um, based out of EMEA. I'm based in EMEA, but I, I look after a number of our partners, including the great partnership we have with Cameo globally. So I'm going to start by giving a bit of an overview on how we see Chrome. Sorry, could you just confirm that you guys can see my screen at the minute? Or yes, we can see yes, now we can. Yeah. Okay, sorry, great. Um, so yes, 
I hadn't got anywhere with my slides, so I think we're, we're good. But yeah, my plan is to give you a bit of an overview on the joint solution. So how on the, the Chrome Enterprise team, we position um, Cameo plus Chrome OS. And then I'm going to hand over to Jordan, who's going to bring us through a, a demo of the solution. So just to set some context, we've all been on quite a journey. If you take a step back and just think about where we've come from and where we've we've been in the past two years, uh, we really have fundamentally changed the way that we all work. Some people are, are returning to the office or have returned to the office while many more are still working at home, either a few days a week or, or all of the time. And when you think about it, the rate of change is phenomenal. And we, we really, it's really unprecedented. So there's stats here from PwC that that say that the average time it took businesses to set up remote working was 11 days. And businesses are telling us that they've digitized processes up to 40 times quicker than they would have ever expected was possible. So these are phenomenal results. I mean, before the pandemic, I definitely don't think that we would have expected that we could have achieved this across the industry. And to a large extent, this has been received as being a positive thing, right? That that the change has been a success, that people have continued to be able to work re remotely um, and that we we have been productive, right? So on the whole, I think we we have to give ourselves a lot of credit for, for where we've got to, but it definitely has had its challenges. And one of the big challenges we're facing now is that a lot of things that were put in place as potential stopgap solutions we're now having to evaluate those and see, is it the right solution for the long run? Um, are we, have we compromised say on security or on, on user experience to get our remote working set up and where are we going to in the future? And to that point, companies are telling us that endpoints are one of the, the big things that they're struggling with. So when the pandemic hit, Anybody that was in the office could pretty easily pick up their laptop, bring it home and, and get back online and start working. One of the big challenges we've seen is with new hires. So when somebody new is onboarded, it's quite difficult to get them a new device to make sure that the device is imaged correctly, that it has the security uh, posture that's expected and that the user is able to log in when they receive the device. So that's definitely something that, that we've been told uh, businesses are, are struggling with. The second one then is distributed endpoint security. So obviously we've come from a place where the majority of devices were sitting behind the corporate firewall to a point, a place where everybody's connecting from their home broadband. And a lot of these devices will never be on the corporate network. So companies are thinking about how they move towards say a, a zero trust approach to security as opposed to relying, relying on firewalls and endpoint security that, that solutions that they had in the past. And then a big issue for a lot of businesses is managing applications. So again, it was much easier to push out applications and updates when the device was sitting on the corporate network. And this has become a much harder thing to, to manage when, when devices are remote. So we've got a proliferation of all different types of applications sitting out there. No great reporting as to what versions people are using or which applications people are using on a regular basis. Um, and no, um, no easy reporting, as I say, across that. So overall, this is costing money. Uh, it's ineffective, and it's disturbing the way that users are are working. So I guess the good news is that there is an alternative, and we see that there are a lot of businesses who are seeing if they, there's an alternative to the way that they've been working and, and a smarter way of doing things. And we're here to try and convince you that Cameo plus Chrome Enterprise is a really good alternative um, and it's particularly well suited to remote and mobile workers. So I'm going to jump into some of the benefits of, of the joint solution, in particular, how we approach security, deployment and, and management, uh, the user experience. Obviously, we're talking about Cameo, so application delivery is really important. and then in the in the climate we're in we we have to talk about 
how it's a, a smart move from an economic perspective and also from an environmental perspective. So firstly, just touching on security. So um, there's a couple of pieces that we're really proud of here. So first, this big statement that Chrome OS has never had any reported ransomware attacks. Um, we're very proud of that. And, and we're, we're, we're very confident about talking about that publicly and shouting loudly about it because we believe in the security stance of the product. Uh, but to dig a bit deeper into that, some of the reasons why we're strong in this particular area is the whole uh, stack, the whole Chrome OS stack is, is built with security top of mind. So from the firmware right up through to the OS level, all of the software that's all of the OS software that's running on the device is delivered directly from Google servers signed by Google. Um, and that allows us to do things like verify at each boot that, that all of the software is running as expected and is the, is the code that was delivered to you from Google. We also um, run the OS in a read-only partition. So it, it should be extremely difficult for any third-party software or website to modify anything in the OS. And we block all executables on the device. So you can't download a .exe file and, and run it locally on the device um, in, any, in any case. On top of that, with Chrome Enterprise, your IT have full control over a, a whole host of policies. So, so this controls everything from who can log into the device to what the user experience looks like, what applications get delivered to them, how they connect to networks. Um, there's over 500 policies for the administrators administrators to customize the look and feel of their device. And this replaces things like imaging laptops, as an example, all of your corporate policy is delivered through this, through this mechanism. Um, in terms of OS updates, we push a major version of Chrome OS every four weeks. It happens silently. The user doesn't have to interact with it in any way. It downloads and installs in the background. The user then on the next time they restart their device, it will apply the update and get them back up and working within eight to 10 seconds of, of the device powering down. And then Cameo adds to this story as well. So Cameo ensures that all HTTP, HTTPS or RDP server ports are closed at all time. And again, this eliminates um, quite a big attack surface. And they also ensure that you don't need to use VPNs to, to get access to your, your corporate apps and data. Okay, so just touching on deployment and management, a big selling point for Chrome OS is the fact that we have zero touch enrollment. So essentially this means that when you order your, your new devices, you get a list of um, serial numbers and attested device IDs, which you, which you um, register with your domain and that attaches the devices to your management. This means that you can drop ship devices directly to your end users IT never needs to physically touch the device. Once they turn the device on and it connects to a network, it will receive your corporate policy. It will direct the user to their corporate login. And once they log in, all of their applications and settings get, get pushed down to them. You can also very quickly deprovision devices. So if a user, for example, was to leave the organization or they were to get a new device, the old device can be deprovisioned remotely from the admin console. Um, and because of the way our, our security um, stances on the device and the way that we separate user profiles, you can actually easily reassign that device to a new user or to a new use case. So for example, perhaps in um, a hospitality setting, perhaps it goes from being a back office device or a personal device to being um, a public device that, that a, a member of the public can lo log into. It's really quick to deprovision and, and reassign that, that device to a new use case. And I've already touched on management, but again, your the manage the Google Admin Console gives you all the management um, flexibility to configure the device exactly as as your use case uh, dictates. So the next point then is just around employee experience, and we we have data backing up that Chrome OS reduces downtime for the average user by three hours per week. And this is based on things like faster booting. So there's no hanging around waiting to get to the login screen and, and into, your, into your device. Um, secondly, 
the the devices work wherever you are. So again, by leveraging Kameo for your applications, you um you don't need to be on a particular device or you don't need to be connecting with your VPN to get access to your data. Uh, and just on top of that, then we have a huge range of form factors, laptops, convertibles, desktops, and all in one. So depending on the on the particular use case, we've got a Chrome OS device to suit. And I think I've touched on updates as well, but again, this saves the user a lot of time, right? You don't have users postponing applying updates um, in the fear that it's going to lock them out of their device for a certain amount of time. And then our partnership with Kameo means that there's essentially no application that you can't run on Chrome OS. So obviously for things like Google Workspace, they're delivered as, as a SaaS solution. You're going to just open Chrome browser and log in. But every organization has legacy Windows applications that they expect their users to have access to. And essentially, Kameo lets you take these Windows applications and turn them into a web application or a progressive web application with no de development work. You essentially just take your executable, install it on, on the Kameo service, and um, publish it out to your users. They can access it through a, a Chrome browser or as essentially a, a self-contained app in a progressive web app on their Chromebook. So again, for, for companies that are looking at a, a path where they need to migrate existing applications to web applications over the longer term, Kameo really uh, helps accelerate that, that path to the cloud. Um, with the Google Admin Console, then you can push your Kameo applications down to your users. So again, using user and application policy, you can uh, force install and pin applications to the user's taskbar on Chrome OS, meaning that regardless of which Chrome device they log into, once they log in with their corporate credentials, all of the applications they need are there. There's no installed or downloads that need to happen. Um, everything's ready for them as soon as they log in. And then Kameo has some really nice hooks into the Chrome OS operating system. Uh, things like local file system integration mean that the user doesn't have to change the way they work um, with files. So things like opening, saving, editing files all work the way they expect in their applications. And then finally, just to touch on the economics of this, um, firstly, from a pure economic standpoint, uh, the data shows that, that that businesses save an average of $482 per device that they replace with Chrome OS. This is through decreased downtime, which I've already mentioned. Things like security cost avoidance, so not having to run that antivirus software, not having uh, a, an additional license for an encryption solution, those kind of things, but also savings from legacy technologies that, uh, avoidance. So by moving your applications to Kameo, by moving to Google Cloud, and by using Chrome OS, you can start to turn down some of these on-prem and uh, applications and things that you're running in your, in your own data centers. And I think as we're touching on, we're seeing a lot of customers asking about this lately, but Chrome OS is also very focused on sustainability and environmental impact. Um, specifically, Chrome OS devices consume less power, up to 46% less power than comparable um, com competitors' devices. We're very focused on a carbon-free future, and we've made commitments around this, around this area as well. And we're pushing the OEMs to deliver new devices that are using sustainable and recycled, recycled raw materials in the production of the device. So again, a, a real hot topic for, for many customers at the minute. So that's it from me. Um, I'm going to hand over to Jordan, who's going to bring us through a demo of, of Kameo. Jordan, Hi, everybody. Take? Thank you so much for, Daniel, thank you so much for doing that and uh, going through some of the benefits of that, uh, you know, how we can combine uh, both Chrome OS and uh, and Kameo together to really get, uh, be impactful, be able to, uh, you know, complete that uh, digital transformation to the cloud. So we at Kameo are pretty excited about the fact that we can help you as a customer. Um, we call those, you know, some of those last, uh, some of those applications that are needed for your employees, we call them last mile apps. 
uh, we'd be happy to help you with those applications. We can host those applications. Uh, and I'm, and I'm going to show you how all of that works. Uh, and uh, Daniel mentioned a bunch of other really good things that we can do, uh, including supporting some of the Google technology like uh, Google Drive and uh, those progressive web apps. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully we can see that. So from here, uh, you can see one of the things that we did with Cameo is, is that we built this from the ground up. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that you had the easiest and the fastest way to be able to bring some of those legacy applications to the cloud uh, so that you could support those on your Chromebooks and Chrome devices. So we're excited about this. We believe that uh, our virtual application delivery is uh, first rate. It's a very great way for you to be able to uh, deploy those applications. And we've proved that with a lot of our customers. So I'll talk about some customer stories, um, some really great stories, especially in that pandemic when we were uh, making that transformation so quickly, uh, we were able to get you know certain customers up uh, even over the weekend. Uh, a couple of customers came to us and said, we need to be able to support our end users, uh, one up to about 400 uh, users all over the, a weekend. Uh, and we were able to do that very quickly with some of the technologies that you're gonna see today. Um, these are what are called our four pillars. Uh, these are the things that we worked on to be able to provide you a solution. We knew that there was something out there uh, that needed to be done. Uh, so we followed these best practices to be able to build a solution that uh, will work for you uh, to rapidly deploy those applications to your end users. So the first thing is, is that simplicity. Uh, we've really worked on that ease of use, making it very simple for you to install and deploy applications, uh, as well as your end users being able to consume those applications. So we'll get into some great ways that we can distribute applications, including through a web browser or through a progressive web app. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that those end users can consume those applications uh, that are all compatible with Chromebook and other devices. Um, the other thing we did here is, is that we built it on a basis of security. So uh, Daniel mentioned the Zero Trust platform. Uh, again, we, we've built all of that uh, based on that Zero Trust platform. Uh, we've built everything around authentication and verification uh, before we make any connections. Uh, and we are, we feel better uh, about the way that we've provided security. Uh, and we can help you avoid some of those uh, other technologies like RDP and VPN uh, that could potentially cause hazards in your environment. I'd be happy to go into more information about that with you. Uh, we believe we're cost effective. So uh, there are definitely um, some ways that we can save you money. So, uh, Daniel uh, talked about some of those as part of his presentation, uh, not only with you know coupling that with uh, Chrome, uh, devices, but being able to be less expensive than some of these larger solutions. We're, we're very happy uh, to be one of the Chrome recommended solutions uh, for this problem. And uh, Cameo is very flattered, uh, but we also have a very powerful system and a, and a good way for you to be able to uh, provide those uh, solutions in a cost-effective way. Uh, and then we'll talk about some flexible flexibility and how you can host applications if you want to use uh, you know, our fully hosted solution, or if you want to use a uh, your own instance of Google Cloud or uh, an on-site instance to help you with the migration, all of those things are would work very well with uh, Kameo. Um, so I, this is pretty much the only slide. Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show one more thing. Uh, one thing is is that it's not just us that's talking about uh, Kameo. Our customers are talking about us as well. Uh, we typically get a very high satisfaction rating. Uh, you'll see there that the industry average for SaaS is about 30 uh, and for VDI is about 20. Uh, we, get, we, we frequently get into the 70s and 80s. And so we're excited to bring you a solution uh, that we know the customers love and that you're excited to be able to provide those legacy applications in new environments and, and uh, hosted in the cloud. Uh, so, you know, without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into uh, how we can provide those solutions for you. Um, so, first of all, you'll see here, um, everything that you see here is all done through a web browser. Uh, so, I'll go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about um, how we can provide applications. Uh, this is the Cameo interface. Uh, I'm logged in as an administrator, so you'll see a few additional options. 
Uh, but as an end user, you can provide a nice portal for them to click on these tiles and be able to get access to particular applications. Uh, and I'll just jump right into it. So if I go ahead and click the tile uh, for something like Microsoft Office or Microsoft Word, uh, you'll see I'll just jump right into that particular application. Um, now, one of the things I'm going to point out here, uh, and this might be a little bit slower than usual to load up, uh, but you'll see that it's powering on that cloud server. So one of the things that we do uh, from a Cameo perspective is that we uh, make sure that we are efficient in the data center. So when servers are not in use, uh, you'll be able to, um, we'll, we'll shut those servers down automatically. Uh, that saves cost on the back end. It keeps the, that, um, that management system more efficient. And we'll talk a little bit more about servers and how to host uh, applications in just a, in just a few minutes here. Uh, so you can see I've got a full version of uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, in this case, uh, I can do all of the functions that you would typically see uh, in a full version of the uh, application. And you can see all the things that I'm doing here with the, the menus and keyboard commands and mouse commands and so forth. Now, what you're seeing here too is, is that we are all uh, hosting this from a browser. Um, and then I'll show you some other ways that we can distribute the application, including our progressive web apps. Uh, but that makes it easy for the, the end users to be able to access that application. Um, and then all of the compute here uh, is hosted in, in the Google Cloud platform so that you'll be able to uh, get access to those applications from anywhere, securely get access. Uh, now, one thing I wanna point out though, is, is because the compute is in that Google Cloud, uh, we'll need to be able to support some cloud drives. So uh, instead of saving documents locally to uh, this uh, server that's hosted with Google Cloud, what we've done is we've provided ways to access uh, cloud resources. Uh, so again, we built that from the cloud or from the uh, from scratch, so that we could be able to provide a true cloud environment uh, for you to host these applications. Uh, so you can see, for instance, I've got my Google Drive. Uh, we could also support OneDrive or Dropbox, um, and then I can go in here and uh, simply uh, save my documents. In this case, I'll go ahead and save it, uh, or open my documents, uh, and those will just simply pull directly from uh, your Google Drive. So you can see here, I'll go and open a document here. And then that will just automatically open it right from within the application uh, right here so that you can use it. So you can see that we've made it easy for those end users to not only access applications, but also to use the applications in context. The other thing you'll notice here too is, is that uh, we are focusing on the application itself. Uh, so, you know, if you've got end users and so forth, you're not providing the VDI uh, desktops and so forth so that they have an additional desktop. Uh, we're just simply focusing on the applications themselves. Um, another thing here is, is, you know, things like printing. Uh, so if I go ahead and hit print, we have what we call the Camille virtual printer driver. Uh, I would go hit print here. It would use the browser uh, to be able to pull up that print dialog box. And then I would be able to select the local printer driver and hit print from here. So it's a pass through driver, if you will. So all of the functions that you worry about with the remote solution, uh, we've just taken care of. Uh, you can see that, uh, for instance, if you know if you want to be able to access this from different locations, including an on-site data center, we can we can set that up as well. Uh, and then we all of this stuff use, as I mentioned, is hosted with Google Cloud Platform. Okay. So from an end user perspective, um, that's pretty straightforward. Um, I did want to show you a little bit of progressive web app. Um, so you'll notice that I get something here where it's a little bit more native. Uh, it's not necessarily hosted in the browser, but it is uh, something that, I'm gonna move this box, I thought it would disappear. Okay, but that's a little bit more um, native uh, in the fact that I can, you know, if I launch an application, like for instance, let's launch Excel, uh, this Excel application will come up in its own box. Of course, it'll connect to the server. Um, and then the other thing too is around authentication. So we do support things like SSO, uh, where it would cause you to uh, log into that application ahead of time uh, so that you can protect your applications uh, through uh, some, some good security. So here's a, an easy budget here. You can see uh, Excel is just running in a nice little, uh, in its own environment, if you will. Okay, so getting back to, um, getting back to the console, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change hats 
so we'll go from an end user experience to an administrative uh, user experience. And so I'll go into some details as to uh, how we can set up and host applications. Uh, so I'll do that through uh, setting up servers. So the first thing is I'll need to install the software application on a server. Uh, all of these servers that you see here are hosted in Google Cloud. Uh, so that I'm able to get access to the applications from anywhere. Now you do have choices. Um, so if I go ahead and hit uh, add here, for instance, uh, are fully hosted, as I mentioned, all you would do is, uh, let's go look at this. All you would do is you would select a data center. Hopefully I can get there. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'd be able to select a data center. I'd be able to hit this big, oh, here we go. It hit this big button here that says create now. Uh, and it takes about three to five minutes to create that server. Um, if you wanna use your own instance of Google Cloud, as opposed to uh, the Kamao instance, uh, you could use the self-hosted option. And then what you would do is uh, something called BYO, where you would connect your instance of GCP uh, and then be able to create servers automatically in your instance. Uh, and this is a great way for you to support some of those on-site applications. So some of the applications that you saw in my demo were off-the-shelf applications, but if you have some off-the-shelf applications that need backends like databases uh, and you know file servers and all of the backends, uh, we could certainly do that. Um, we can also uh, support some of those legacy applications that you've got that are become business critical. Uh, you know, we'd be go happy to take a look and see what those use cases are to be able to help you uh, get those applications out of, uh, you know, out of the data centers, if you will, and into the hands of the end users, uh, depending on, you know, where those users are, we can certainly enable them from anywhere uh, and from those Chrome devices. Okay, so once I have a server created, uh, we'll go back to servers here. Uh, what I'll need to do is I'll need to connect to that server. Uh, so I would connect to it as an admin. Uh, and once I do, um, I have a chance to install software. Uh, so what you'll need is you'll need an EXE or an MSI software install package. Uh, and then you'll need to install that here in this interface. So this is a nice little uh, box here that shows you the steps. So let's go get uh, a software installer. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go directly to a vendor's website, or if you want to, you can also just simply drag and drop the pieces or the EXE or the uh, MSI package directly onto this uh, window to be able to upload that to the server. Um, in this case, I'll just go directly to a vendor's website. So we'll do something simple like Notepad++. Uh, we'll go find the application. And I'll download it. So we'll make it, we'll do an easy example. Uh, just to make it run fast. So I do the click through, ignore the license agreement. Okay, uh, and that's it pretty much. I can install this application. It's now ready for me to publish. Um, in this case, I can also do some additional configuration. So if I launch this application in this administrative view, I can have a chance to add additional files. Uh, you know, if I need to make any changes to settings, if I need to license the application, if I need to connect it to backends like backend databases or file shares, um, I can do that all from within this interface. In this case, I don't need to do much. So over here on step number three, we need to just simply publish the application. So over here on the bottom right, I just check the box, hit apply. Okay, now if I go back to my Cameo uh, portal, uh, we'll click on applications here. Uh, Notepad++ will show up in this particular application. So you'll see I now have a new icon for Notepad++. Um, and then here's a couple of different ways that we can deploy the application. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll get more details as I click on the application here. Uh, so first thing is, is I can use the portal that you just saw, so the Cameo portal. So over here on the right, I can just check the box uh, and select the Cameo portal. Um, I can also do things like set restrictions. So if you only want this to go to, you know, engineers or HR, uh, you can certainly do that. Um, I also have other ways to deploy this application. Uh, the first one is, is there is a direct link. I could copy this link and put it in an email 
paste it in a new tab, um, post it on a website if you have an intranet site. So there's all good ways that you can be able to distribute that application. Uh, now with our good partnership with Google, here's another great way and that's that progressive web app that I showed you. Uh, so what we can do here is we can copy and paste uh, this link um, and then be able to go to the Google admin console uh, and push that out to all of our Chromebooks. Uh, and then we can push those out either in uh, the app shelf. Uh, so you'll see a couple of Kameo apps in here. So uh, for instance, here's, here's Word and Excel uh, and Photoshop, for instance, those are all uh, Kameo applications that are being hosted in the Google Cloud Platform or I could put them right directly on the taskbar itself. Uh, so I, I think I showed you, uh, so here's a, a great way to distribute your application. Uh, in this case, I just clicked on that uh, taskbar uh, option. It connects to the server, and then it brings me into a full version of Microsoft Office in this case. So there's my full version of Microsoft Office, and now I'm off and running. I have all those same integrated features uh, with uh, you know, being able to save as, hit browse, uh, and then being able to save directly to the Google Drive. Um, good, so there's a couple of different ways that we can distribute applications, as I mentioned. Uh, a great way, of course, is using you know, the, the, the Kameo portal uh, and some of the web, uh, integrated web functions uh, to be able to get access to those applications right from within a browser. So there's easy ways to access those applications. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is resourcing. So uh, the first thing that we've done here, um, you know, don't don't confuse simplicity for complexity. We've taken care of a lot of the complexity for you. Uh, so what you'll see here is I've created that first server. I can install the software on it, uh, get it to a state where everything is working and, and configured correctly. Uh, and then what I can do is I can create what we call an elastic cluster. Um, and what the Elastic Cluster will do is it'll create additional servers and resources to be able to handle load at, at peak times. Uh, and then we'll be able to do load balancing and so forth among those servers. So if you've got 100 or 1,000 or tens of thousands of users, uh, we can be able to compensate for all of those uh, users getting on at the same time by simply adding and dynamically adding those servers. So if we need to add things like thresholds, uh, CPU, our memory, RAM, all those different things and add servers um, as needed, we can certainly do that. The other cool thing about Elastic Clustering is, is that we can save you uh, those resources in the data center. So if you don't wanna pay for them, uh, resources get shut down. So you'll notice that um, this resource has been shut down uh, to save cost in the data center, uh, as well as spun up when, when they're needed. Uh, and then we can also shrink these elastic rays uh, to be able to handle uh, you know, lower loads as we get to optimizing and understanding how uh, everything works in your environment. The uh, last thing I'm gonna show you here is uh, some additional security. Uh, so Daniel mentioned some of the security that we can provide. Everything that you see here is, is based on zero trust. Uh, we do have patented technologies to help keep you secure. So uh, locking down ports, we do have uh, cloud tunneling. Uh, which is a great way to uh, set up a proxy, a cloud proxy to be able to access resources, uh, lots of cool things. But the main thing here is, is that we're also setting up authentication, uh, being able to use your authentication to uh, make sure that those only those users who are authorized will be able to get access to your applications. Uh, so what you would do is you would claim your identity domain, or you would select your SSO provider. Uh, Google's a great way to do that. Uh, you can use Google to log in. Uh, and then you'd be able to request users connect directly to their Google Drives. Um, so we've made authentication very easy. Uh, in this case, because we're using uh, Google as an authentication, you don't necessarily have to add users manually. Uh, users can, in your domain, will just be able to get access to those applications and then you can set restrictions and so forth. Uh, and then you're also welcome to put some logos and so forth. So lots of power uh, behind what we've done here. A lot of times, uh, customers will come to us and say, hey, I need this application. We can get them set up, set up in a matter of minutes. Uh, a lot of times being able to get those you know, initial uh, applications up and running and then deploy to their users uh, sometimes in a matter of hours. So very easy for you to deploy applications, uh, very easy for you to install uh, applications and administer those and make sure that they get into the hands of the right people and not the wrong people. Um, so we're pretty proud of this. Uh, and we are able to offer this to you 
Um, so if you do have questions uh, and you'd like to be able to uh, get a demo, uh, your own personal demo or a trial of Cameo, uh, make sure you contact your uh, Zentegra uh, sales rep. Uh, they would be happy to discuss this in more detail as to how this would work with your environment. Good. I, is there any questions? I know we have a small audience, but is there any questions that you have? You're also able, I believe, to share questions in the Q and A box with uh, with the Zoom. Um, Jordan, I don't see any question from anyone yet. Uh, so you can keep going. If there is anything that comes up, I will bring it up. Okay, fantastic. I don't want to keep people much longer, but I do want to emphasize uh, the fact that you know, with a good relationship with uh, with Google and Zintegra. Uh, Cameo is a great way for you to be able to, uh, you know, share those applications with your end users. Uh, it's a great and rapid way to be able to get those applications into the hands of the users. Um, you know, if they're a remote user or a hybrid user, or if they are ones that are accessing, uh, you know, Windows applications and you've got something in the back end that you still need, or if you need something that's behind a firewall, uh, those are all things that we can help you with. Uh, and, and again, I want to emphasize that if you are interested, uh, please contact uh, your Zentegra uh, rep. Um, Jordan, I have one quick question uh, just sure. so that I understand. <laughs> so um, apps, I understand app, we can uh, deliver it uh, uh, remotely on any device from any place um, uh, securely. Uh, mm -hmm. We can do hosted desktop. Is there a scenario uh, with Cameo that we can do uh, native uh, uh, VDI as well. Uh, as yeah, in, uh, if you if that, yeah. So I concentrated mainly on the application uh, and you know how we uh, integrate with um, you know with uh, Chromebook. Uh, let me reshare my desktop here. Uh, but if you if you do need uh, you know a full desktop, um, we we can provide something along those lines uh, with a shell lockdown. Uh, so. You know, if, if that's a if that's a necessity in your environment, uh, you know, please contact us. We'd be able to take a look at that and see what your needs are uh, around that. Um, but what we're finding with a lot of our customers is that, uh, you know, with uh, the applications that they need to deploy, uh, it really is, um, you know, they really do want to concentrate specifically on the application itself, especially if it's a legacy application like a database application and so forth. Uh, you know, just sharing. Uh, the application itself and not having to confuse the user with an additional desktop and so forth. Uh, so what you're seeing here is, is that our VDI type implementation, if you will. Um, anyway, not having to share an entire desktop with the user who just needs to get their job function done uh, through an application is the preferred method. Uh, and so that's why it makes it easy for you know, people just to pop up and get you know, these applications that look like uh, you know, Chrome native applications, if you will, but are running uh, basically a Windows version of those apps. Uh, so lots of ways that we can, uh, you know, help you with your environment. Uh, generally, we save this uh, VDI environment to some of the more like power users or people that are requesting uh, some additional functionality. Uh, but, you know, we can certainly talk and give you more ideas as to how that would work with Kameo. And I'd be happy to uh, share that with you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think that uh, answered my question. Uh, so uh, uh, it's all about the uh, apps uh, only because of uh, the cost saving and uh, value proposition that it brings. When you have to uh, run things on your laptop and you have to run a, a, a different uh, desktop on top of that, that definitely confuses um, uh, your end customer. Uh, at the same time, it uh, it adds up the cost as well. And and uh, if you are trying to do a cost saving, it does not make much sense to uh, to have a layer up uh, uh, um, desktop running over desktop. Uh, so one more question on uh, identity. So uh, is there any dependency on uh, either Microsoft or um, what kind of identity is supported by uh, Cameo? Uh, so I talked about Google. Uh, that was one option, but anything that, that uh, you know is a single sign-on uh, that you, that supports OAuth two uh, 
uh, is something that we can support. So if you've got, you know, Office 365, if you've got uh, Azure AD or Okta or Ping or any of those, uh, you know, big players that have the SSO, we can certainly support that. Uh, we are not dependent on um, any type of uh, Microsoft Active Directory authentication, um, but that is supported if you if you choose to do so. Got it. Thank you so much. So uh, I still don't see any question from um, from uh, from our attendees. Um, Moin, I do uh, have one. It says, "How do you compare to Citrix?" Okay. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So I can answer that. So Citrix. Uh, you know, is a great solution. It has it has um, you know some amazing flexibility and so forth. But uh, there is complexity to Citrix. Uh, it's a it's a heavy lift to get in very quickly with it. Um, you know, if you've got an investment and so forth in Citrix, uh, then you're probably still continuing to invest and build it. Um, so the nice things about Cameo is uh, you know all the things that I've just spelled out. Right, that ease of use, uh, making it easy to deploy. Uh, a lot of the servers and resources, um, hosting everything in the cloud, um, you know, or making it easy to host it in your own data center. Uh, all of those things um, are just easier to do inside of Cameo uh, and much more flexible uh, for some of the things you that you can see here. So I'd be happy to go into more detail with that, uh, Stan, if you want, are interested, we, we can set up a session and go into some more details as to how we, we compare to Citrix. Thank you so much, uh, Jordan. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel, Rob, uh, um, and everyone uh, to attend this uh, technical webinar. Uh, we will continue to bring up such uh, uh, webinars for our um, customers, attendees. Uh, we want to bring the value on uh, tree, true EUC. And I feel that uh, the alignment with uh, Chrome OS and Cameo uh, and Zentegra uh, we are able to demonstrate uh, the complete solutioning. And then this is something that uh, I personally feel that uh, uh, Cameo does a great job on uh, pulling both the side of uh, EUC uh, very well. So again, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, have a wonderful afternoon and a great weekend. Thank you, everybody.